All right, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Bainbridge Island Community Centers, something to talk about. And today, uh, very excited to have with us Jess Henderson, who is the program manager at Barn. And she's gonna be telling us all about the different programs they have going on. Uh, we're gonna get a tour of the facility. Um, so welcome Jess, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I have to say, I, uh, I learned about this a couple days ago. Our director was going to be talking today. So I got to fill in for her because she wasn't available. And I'm going to do my best. I have no notes. I am ad-libbing for, for the, the whole session today. Um, but I love Barn. I work here. I've worked here for about two years. And so I realized that a year of that has been during COVID um, and Barn has been closed. So we're thrilled next Monday, Barn is starting to open again. We are having some limited open studios for members of Barn. And so we're getting all excited to welcome people back into the building. But this will be a great taste for those of you who haven't been to Barn um, to see into our studios and learn about our projects and programs. And also, uh, for those of you who have been here but haven't stepped through the doors in a while, you'll get uh, reacquainted with the facility and hopefully get excited to come over and, and play. So I thought I would start outside because it's so gorgeous out here today and um, just kind of take you on a little walk into the building and tell you a little bit about us. Uh, maybe before I start moving, I should say that um, we've been in this building, oh gosh, I think coming up on four years now. And Barn started, maybe maybe you know, uh, Barn started, oh gosh, uh, maybe six or so years ago. Um, and even before that, um, the planning was that, hey, let's have a community center where people can come together and work on woodworking projects, share tools, and um, pool resources so we all don't have to have our own equipment in our garages or shoved in uh, some, some corner of our house. But let's get together and make a community maker space and um, community art center. And so a lot of other disciplines joined the party and we now have 10 different artisan studios and um, from, from the woodworking to metalworking and jewelry, book arts and kitchen arts. So you're gonna get to see a lot of that today. All right, here we go. I'm actually going to fob myself in. The fob is such a beautiful thing. When you become a member, you get this little magic wand that you can swipe and it lets you in the front door when the doors are locked, which they are right now. I want to show you this beautiful tree behind me, which was constructed by Bob Mathisrud in our metal studio to hang masks for anybody who might show up and not have a mask. These masks were made by wonderful volunteers in our fiber art studio. And so it's, this is our mask tree and you can grab a mask if you need one. And I need to put my mask on now cause I'm going inside. Alrighty. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna flip my camera so you can see the space here at Barn. And this is our welcome desk where very shortly we will have a cheerful person greeting. And we have a station here for COVID safety measures, hand sanitizer, sign in, sign a release that says you're, you're feeling well and <laughs> you won't come if you're not. And we have some displays and wonderful artwork. Things are a little bit of a mess right now because we've been closed for a year. But this is a beautiful open space downstairs. We have uh, a commons, which is where folks can have their lunch or have meetings, spread out their creative projects. And 
a nice just community space. All right, so I'm gonna walk down the hall. We have two stories here at Barn and I'm gonna walk down the hall to our kitchen arts studio where we will find Megan Mails, who is the coordinator of the Barn Bites program, which is a program where we are making hundreds of meals every week and distributing them to folks in the community for no charge. And Megan, I think, talked at one of these talks, um, gosh, I don't know, maybe six months or a year ago to talk about the program. And she should be here to give us some updates. So I'm gonna flip my camera and there she is. Hi, Megan. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so Megan, you're here today. Are you working on Barn Bites? I am working on Barn Bites. Like we just finished making all the food for Barn Bites. Oh, hold on one. Can you all hear Megan? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, a little, if you could go just a tick closer, then I think we'll catch your voice. How about now? I'm going to keep my mask on since Jess and I are so close. Yes, perfect. And I will say, stay as okay. comfortable as you are, you certainly don't need to be too close. Um, and then, Megan, if you could just speak nice and loudly and slowly, that will help us catch everything. Sounds great. I'll try and be loud and clear for you guys. Uh, so we just finished uh, cooking for Barn Bites today. Uh, usually on Wednesdays, that's our big production day where we're making all the food. Thursdays, everything gets packaged. Um, since April of last year, we have made over 7,000 packaged meals, which is kind of crazy to think about because it's gone so quickly. Um, currently, we are providing meals for a helpline house um, there's a large group that gets meals delivered through Island Volunteer Caregivers. Um, and since we started back up again in September, we've actually added some meals and we are delivering up to uh, ShareNet. Helping feed Gateway Church in Paulsbo. So we've expanded our reach a little bit since I last talked to you guys. Um, we're kind of Kitsap County, North Kitsap a little more as well, which is great. Um, everything is still mostly done by volunteer labor and the food has um, been purchased via private donations um, through the barn website, or we've also been really fortunate to have um, some funding grants come through the Bainbridge Community Foundation, uh, First Federal Bank, and uh, Kitsap Bank as well. So we've been able to keep it going through all of that, which is great. Um, this week's menu is white bean and spinach uh, soup. It's vegetarian. We are doing a ham and cheddar or vegetarian um, frittata that comes with a barley salad with spinach and pickled onions. And the other dish that we're doing is um, roasted Greek chicken with cucumber tomato salad and herbed orzo. So that'll be the, uh, the spread that gets delivered on Friday. Um, does anybody have any questions about Barn Bites, about what we're doing and how we're cooking and that kind of stuff? Yeah, you to, have to, um, uh, I'm Megan. Um, I'm in the Winslow Arms and I just want to let you know that we are so grateful for all the food that we get from you and it's so great. I just wanted to know from oh, you what? if you could tell us what are we getting this week? Oh, oh you, do you, okay, so the menu again this week, um, let's see, Winslow Arms. So you're going, so you guys are getting an option of um, ham and cheddar frittata and that comes with a um, barley salad on the side with spinach and arugula in it, or there's a vegetarian frittata, which has the barley salad. And then the soup this week is white bean, uh, vegetable and spinach. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Can hardly wait. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the food. It's really fun um, having the Island Volunteer Caregivers come every week and pick it up um, 
on Thursdays. They really have a good time dropping the food off with you guys. Great. Yeah, Megan, and I'll just say. Sorry, I was just. Any questions for Megan? Yeah, this is Katie. Um, and Megan, I work with Island Volunteer Caregivers and also the Senior Center. And I know we've emailed before, but I also just want to add um, how much our volunteers have loved being able to participate and our folks who are receiving the meals. Um, we've just heard wonderful things. So we're very grateful for all the work you and your team are doing. Oh, thank you very much. I love when we get feedback like that because I can pass it on to the volunteers. Um, they work really hard every week and, um, you know, get a lot of fun experience cooking, but they also really, really enjoy cooking for you guys. And they love hearing that people are enjoying the food that they're making. So um, I will make sure to pass that on to everyone. All right. Any other questions for Megan? Okay, well, thank you well, so much. Thank you, guys. It was good to see you all again. I was just going to make this comment that uh, I am a volunteer with, uh, with the Interfaith Council, and we haven't been able to do super suppers for the past year because of the COVID concerns. And so we are grateful for the hard work of everybody at Barn uh, and IVC to provide that regular meal service to people. Oh, that's wonderful. I know you guys have had to stop that. And I know some of your clients prefer IBC and some of them are able to get it through helpline. So I'm, I'm glad that we can keep that going and um, keep everybody well fed. <laughs> Megan is so good at that. She is uh, such an asset to Barn and, and has, you know, look at this beautiful kitchen that she gets to work in. And it's a great use of the space right now. Um, Oh, are we going to show them the, the, the walk-in? Oh. Oh boy, look at all of this good food in you here. Can see it in bulk. This is the, this oh. was this is this week's salad which turned out really beautiful. Oh, we have a colorful salad. So you've got there's actually um bulgur wheat underneath there. So uh it's going to be a mix of spinach and arugula. This is what you get. To, this is before the packaging. So we've got the bulgur that we cooked, and some pickled red onions, some spinach, arugula, parmesan. That's going to get an apple cider herb vinaigrette, and that'll be the side salad with the frittata, which you guys at Winslow Arms will get. But it just ended up being really colorful this week. Oh, so nice. Thank you so much, Megan. Yeah, Thanks. I can show you guys that. Thank Thanks you. for your work. It was good to see you all. Thank you, Megan. Okay. All right. Well, uh oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that was our kitchen. And I'm going to just, I'm just going to walk around the building a little bit more and show you some of the other spaces and um, give you a chance to ask questions as well. So some of you may not know we have a writer studio, which uh, is this, this, this room right here, where, of course, writing is an art. And this is a space where people can come and work on their projects and come and learn from instructors that are teaching about writing a novel or nonfiction or children's books. And um, because Barn is a combination of an open makerspace where people can come and use the studios and use the equipment, they, we also have learning opportunities that are specific classes that are set up. And back in March of 2020, we started to, we started to look into how to do that online. And so starting in May of last year, we have offered online classes as well. And the Writer Studio has been amazing with that. They can zoom in from anywhere. And as long as you have a laptop or a pen and pencil, you can work on your craft. So that's the Writer Studio. And I'm walking down the hall here, going back through our lobby. And we are gonna 
swing by the Electronic and Technical Arts Studio. And I'll flip my camera and show you in here. The open sign is not lit up, but <laughs> I turned the lights on there, in, on in there earlier. And you can see this jumble of crazy equipment that is for anybody to come and learn how to use and to play with. You'll see we have a couple of 3D printers there. Um, we have lots of soldering equipment. This is where you can play with electronics. And back around the corner, we have two giant laser cutters where folks can make things like this fairy clock cut out of wood. This is amazing because it tells you where the ferry is um, on its journey back and forth from Seattle to Bainbridge Island. And you can see some other things that have been cut from wood with our laser cutters. This studio is awesome because it interfaces so much with other studios like the printmakers that will use the laser cutters to print, to create a block to then make prints from, or the jewelers who come to make a, a model, a prototype of something on a 3D printer that they're gonna then cast and make into a silver piece for, for their jewelry projects. So Electronic and Technical Arts is an amazing studio. And they did a lot of work with making um, PPE, the protective equipment for COVID when that was a need last spring. So there were some amazing projects done for the community as that is a part of Barnes' mission to support the community. All right, I'm gonna flip my camera. This is the staff office, there's my desk. And it's pretty quiet right now. And, oh, we've spotted somebody, my son, Talis. <laughs> it's almost time for Talis to go to school. <laughs> All righty. So I'm gonna take you down the hallway here and we're coming into the metal wing. This, I wish that you could smell what I am about to smell because when you go into a metal machine shop, can you picture, can you just in your mind, just when you see this equipment, just the smell of metal machines and, and grease and <laughs> You can just think of just creating industrially so many cool things that you think just miraculously appear in our world. Well, these are the kinds of tools that make things out of metal for use in our daily lives. And this is the, there's so much electronics that connects with these tools so that you can program what you want them to do and we have people in the studio that run the studio that can help people that want to learn about metal, metal working and take classes and just come and tinker. So you can see there's nobody here now, but we have a lot of folks that come and work in here. And I want to tell you about a project that was done through the Metal Machining Studio, which was the Ritchie Observatory in uh, the Battle Point uh, Park. The, the telescope was slipping. And what good is a telescope to look at the stars if it just keeps slipping and it, won't, it can't stay in one place? So the Barn Metal Studio decided, well, we can, make, we can fabricate pieces, replacement pieces for this telescope so that it will stay in place. And so it was really cool for them to work for quite many, many, many months on creating that. And as far as I know, that's been wrapped up and the telescope is working. And um, so it's, it's really exciting to interact with the community in that kind of way. I'm gonna sneak through here, watching my step. And so we actually have two metal shops this is the machining studio. And then we have what we call JAWS, the Jack Archer Sheet Metal and Welding Studio. And 
This is the door to the welding and sheet metal studio. I'm going to fob in. And it's the, the, the window on the door is covered with a, with a protective film because sparks fly in here and we have to be safe and not look at the sparks. This is the sheet metal area. There's some really cool tools to, to shape and bend and, and cut sheet metal. And you can make things like loaf pans and, and dust, dust pans and <laughs> all manner of things that you can dream up. And we have welding stations and we have a plasma cutter. So you can program this machine or you can freehand cut um, into metal and make art with it. Does anybody have questions about the metal studios? Jess, I'm, this is Katie. I, I was just curious. I know you mentioned that there are folks there to help out if people have questions or to learn how to use the machines. Is, are Under, you know, non-pandemic times, um, are there certain hours that people are available or is there just always somebody there that can answer questions and help guide people? That's a good question. Um, I think, ooh, there's often... There's often somebody in most studios during the day. Um, we're open generally from about eight in the morning. Our doors are open until 10 p.m. normally, but um, for the next year, probably a little bit shorter hours. Um, we can't guarantee there's gonna be somebody around in every studio, but you can take your chances and stop by anytime. Um, but we have a lot of orientation classes. I'm going to take my mask off because I'm in a room by myself. Um, there's a lot of orientation classes that you can sign up for, just an hour-long visit to kind of get oriented in a studio. And then also introductory classes that you can take to, um, you know, just kind of get on the path of getting signed off in each studio. There's every studio of our 10 studios has a different program for how to get signed off. In the writer's studio, for example, it's very simple. You learn how to turn the lights on and how to turn the printer on. But in the metal studio, for example, there, it's very involved on getting trained on all of the equipment before you can come in and work on your own. Um, but yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. And that does make sense because just seeing that glimpse of the, the metalworking studio, I imagine, you know, somebody wouldn't just waltz in there and start to experiment with things. <laughs> I imagine you need to learn a few steps first. Yeah, and this might be a good time to mention that our studios are really run by volunteers. Um, we have a fairly small staff of about maybe, well, we have 10 people and many of those are part-time. So this place is really run by volunteers and it works well in the sense that each studio has people that are passionate about their craft, that are in charge of the policies and the, the programming in their studio. Um, so it's just amazing that, um, that the folks that are here are giving of their time to share with others. And it really, it really um, kind of drives home our mission of being an intergenerational community space where we're inspiring each other to learn and to grow and to be creative. And so um, anytime you walk in, I think you will feel that the people here are here because they want to be with others. They're not just doing their craft at home um, by themselves. They want to share and collaborate and learn together. And so there's a lot of opportunity for that. The other thing, Katie, is that folks could sign up for an open studio. Um, and typically you would, um, you would get trained before you can come and use an open studio, but that's a time when there would be a monitor in the studio and you could come and talk with them. Uh, during open specific scheduled open studio times. Alrighty, well, are we ready to move along? We've got a lot to see. Okay. Yeah, sounds good.
Let's go to the jewelry studio, jewelry and fine metals. And I think we might have some people working in here. So we might get a little taste of activity. These are steering committee members and volunteers here. So let me flip my camera. And here we are. And there's Sue and Karen at work. Oh, you're, what are you up to? Stone. She's polishing a stone over here. Is that lapidary? It's la this is our lapidary set up here, and I'm repolishing an offering cabochon that I had bought, but it had some pits and scratches in it, so I'm repolishing our machines here so that I can set it in a pendant setting that I have that I'm, I started. Oh my god! So that's what I'm doing today. Oh, cool! And then Sue over here is uh, going through our tool cabinet, and she's training to be a monitor for our open studio for when we reopen in a couple of months next month. Awesome! Hi! Hi! Look at all of the awesome equipment and tools. Yeah. I wouldn't even begin to know how to name all of these tools, let alone use them, but. It is just awesome to think about all of the possibilities of what could be made in this space with these tools. That's so, so cool. You can walk forward and I can marry it for you. What oh, okay. What are we okay. looking at, Karen? So on the left, we have uh, a bunch of tools. We have a ring stretcher sizer. We have cutting shears for metal and they keep going forward and we've got two gray ovens here and those are kilns for copper enameling copper enamel and kilns. Then here we have a hydraulic press and here we have this is kind of fun this is what we call the slammer and you put a piece of metal in here and just oh the that, slammer and it flattens it yeah yeah very technical term yeah and then we've got our polishing machine here and we have um, as you turn this way to your right, you can see there are 12, we have 12 bench studio setups, so we can have 12 people working in here at a time. That's amazing. Maybe Once COVID is over. Once right. COVID is over. Right. So we, um, we have been doing a lot of streaming of classes. Um, and, uh, and so there's been a lot of activity. You can watch activity in the studio. Um, when you're when you're at home. So for if any of you are interested in taking any classes or getting involved in any of the studios, you can go to our website at bainbridgebarn.org and you can go to studios and scroll down and find one that you like. Click on that and it'll show you the calendar of all of the events that are happening in that studio. Okay, well, thank you so much, Karen. Is there anything else you wanna say about what you have going on in here? Well, I was just going to point out this casting oven here. We do casting by proxy, and that's where people make things out of wax. They send, we have wax class, wax carving classes. They bring them in, and then Nan Zollin has been casting it in silver or bronze, and we do it live called casting by proxy. I think this okay. month in March, we still have one, and we used to do it on Wednesday afternoons once a month, but now we're going to move it because of open studio. But that's something free. If you're interested in seeing how we do our casting pro uh, process, you can sign up for free and just watch. Watch casting. And watch. so people are giving their items and then right. they're at home watching them get exactly. made. Yeah. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Enjoy yeah. your lapidary work. Oh, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Uh, this would be a really good time for me to mention that we have a really cool new program that is called our Certificate of Craft program, which is for folks that want to really delve into a craft area. And it's, it's a great way to get started in an industry for folks that might be changing careers or just really want to get in depth into a, into a craft. And um, the jewelry program, we had our first year, a nine month program. And, um, and we're starting again this September, we skipped a year from COVID. But um, we had the, the certificate of craft in jewelry making. 
and we're hoping to expand to other studios as well as we develop and grow. So a uh, certificate of craft in printmaking or uh, woodworking to get people a really good foundation. Okay. Jess, I had another question for you. Um, sure. For all of the different materials and supplies, is that something that's available at Barn? Do people get those materials elsewhere? Or how does that work? That's a great question. So there are a lot of supplies that you can buy here that have been obtained by the studio. So if you wanted to make something out of metal, you could um, buy the metal, buy the pound. Um, or the woodworking studio does have some wood as well. The fiber studio will have some fabric for sale. But otherwise, you bring your own supplies when you're working on a project. And I know like in the wood shop, they have things like sandpaper and glue and things that, that you can use. Um, and you don't have to bring all of those little bits and pieces. So um, it's kind of a combination of both. Here's our community kitchen. Oh, Darren's coming out of his office. <laughs> There's our facilities manager. And uh, so folks that come and want to spend a whole day here, you can put your lunch in the fridge. You can heat up your leftover casserole in the microwave, get a cup of coffee. And I'm taking you down the hallway to the, uh, well, first we hit the media art studio. Does anybody know about Bainbridge uh, Community Broadcasting, the podcasting series? Um, I think I'm seeing a few hands. This is a recording studio where a lot of podcasts are made, interviews are done, and it's not very exciting. There's no windows. It's just imagine a lot of microphones and the acoustic paneling on the walls. But this is a cool spot for people to learn how to make recordings and podcasts and audiobooks and that kind of thing. And then this is our glass corner. I'm going to show you some of these pictures of, of some of the artists and community members that make glass and some of their projects that they've made. And this is our glass arts studio. And I'm not going to go in, but you can see there's a lot of bench space for working on stained glass and fused glass projects. There's this whole table that you can do your glass cutting. Uh, we don't have glass blowing. That would be a whole crazy new set of uh, tools. And if you've ever seen glass blowing, there's a lot of heat and things. We don't have the space for that. But we do have kilns for firing fused glass and a lot of different options for glass, like Katie was asking about materials. There's tons of glass here that you can buy and you can come and learn how to do glass projects. All righty. Yes, Joan, did you have a question? Yes, I want to know if you repair stained glass items <gasps> that has been given <sighs> Uh, we get that question occasionally, and we don't really have anybody a part of Barn right now that does that. Okay, thank oh. you. Thank you. I'll check back later. Okay. Um, yeah, apparently stained glass repair is a real uh, industry that is kind of a dying art. And so we've talked about maybe trying to develop a program to get people trained in how to do stained glass repair, because apparently there is a dearth nationwide and certainly in our region for, uh, for stained glass repair. So something for us to look into. Okay, here's the wood shop. This is kind of a bread and butter studio. It was really the heart of uh, starting barn beginning and there are some crazy cool amazing tools in this space if you have a look at this look at the size of that bandsaw it's like nine feet tall I mean you're never gonna have that in your own home studio 
And this is, there's a lot of sanders and a lot of safety protocols for, in place for people to use these tools safely. Um, back on the back wall there, there are a bunch of lathes for turning, wood turning, making bowls and whatever you can dream up. And um, also you can see something hanging from the ceiling. There's no, there aren't any boats in here right now, but the studio is actually called the Woodworking and Boat Building Studio. So we do have projects that work on boats, building boats, repairing boats. And uh, this studio has a lot of um, a lot of open studio time, 30 hours a week, where you can come and work. And if you're not a member of Barn, that's okay. You just pay 20 bucks to come in for the day and to work in the studio, as long as you've been uh, signed off. In the wood shop, there's three classes that you need to take for a total of, I think it might be about six hours of training to fully be let loose in, in the studio. Any questions about the wood shop? All yeah, right, we're gonna go in. Very impressive. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go into the bench room. This is the uh, this is the last space. Uh oh. Let's see if I can get the lights on. I think they're on a on a motion sensor. Oh, there we go. This is the bench room, and this is where uh, where you use hand tools and work on projects that you don't need big power tools for. So you see all those saws? <laughs> it is just crazy to think. And then almost every studio has a library of all these different resources, magazines, books, plans that you can dig into, and a sofa where you can sit down and get creative and dream up another project. A lot of those cabinets have tools all stacked in there. This place was built by a lot of energetic people that worked to collect um, the tools and raise the funds to make, make this place happen. So I'm going to take us over to the print and book studio now. And we got a couple of people in there already. Um, that's our studio lead, Amy, in the red coat and Peggy Graving in the, um, in the vest. And um, this is printmaking and book arts. So you can see there are some really cool printing presses. They're covered right now, but big presses for doing printmaking. And then there's two pieces of equipment kind of in between Amy and Peggy that are letter presses. And this is a really amazing art form that is also somewhat less used in a practical sense now for you know, printing books and things, but it's really an art form in its own right. And so all of these cabinets have different typefaces where you can set your own you know, little project and then put it in the, in the letterpress and crank out different prints from, those, uh, from your, from your um, design. And then um, book arts is another part of the studio where you can learn how to make all different kinds of book bindings. Um, and that has translated really well to our, um, to our online classes because all you need is paper and, um, and a few other supplies that are easy to get. So um, there's a lot of really cool paper cutting and book arts classes online right now. Okay, our last studio is Fiber Arts. All right, I've taken you into the Fiber Arts studio now. And it's a giant space. And uh, kind of one of the highlights is that area with all of the looms uh, the, for weaving. And you can take a class and learn how to weave. Or if you're a weaver, you can, rent, you can kind of rent a loom. It's free for <laughs> members. But you can use a loom for a month. You sign up. You pick your favorite loom. And you can get a project started. You can come back every day and work on it for a month. And then you have to take it off and let someone else have a turn. But that's our weaving. And we have so many different kinds of, well, we have a lot of stuff stored in here right now. But a lot of sewing supplies, embroidery, different kinds of um, 
surface arts. Um, there's different, really fascinating kinds of stitching. Um, Japanese uh, sashiko and baro and all of these different cultural art forms that um, I had never heard of before I started working here. And we have a lot of sewing machines, of course, where people can learn how to sew or practice sewing. And right here, an industrial sewing machine. So if you want to sew uh, cushions for your, your, your uh, deck sofa, you can use the industrial sewing machine that you might not have at home. And then this is a lovely, lovely uh, end to our tour, which is the, the lab, which is a, uh, where we do a lot of natural dyeing. And we have in here, we have a lot of, uh, we have burners where you can bubble and boil all of your natural dug fur tips and, and salal berries and things to make natural dyes so that you can make um, different beautiful fabrics that you can do anything you want with making quilts or uh, clothing. And if you, we have two refrigerators full of dyes, different natural dyes. And uh, so you can come and experiment in here. Wow. So, yeah. So I think that is about the wow. end of the tour. I just want to say, if I was only 40 years younger with all the energy that you guys have, I'd be the first one there. And I thank you so much for the tour. It was beautiful.